Hola amigos, this is Level 12 and today we are going to be talking about the evolution of Prussia. This video was supposed to come out Friday, but I was at the beach and then Sunday I slept most of the day, so we're getting it on Labor Day. So Prussia has evolved from being a Teutonic Knight to what he is today, which is just the eastern half of Germany. Much like how Italy and Romano share Italy. But I wanted to delve deeper into how his transformation came about from the little Teutonic Knight to what we know today as the kind of carefree Prussia. And I enjoyed doing the roughly hour worth of research this took. <laughs> Anyways, um, also all links will be cited in the description. I used quite a few along with a video that um, I used in here, but there probably won't be sound because I think the music is copyrighted in that video. So first is the beginning, the Teutonic Order. As we all know, Prussia was a Teutonic Knight, but we must know when this order arose. It was founded in 1190 in Ark Israel, and it originally was meant to be like a hospital kind of deal, kind of like mm, the Red Cross, I guess. Um, and it popped up during the Third Crusades. And all you need to know about the Crusades was they were holy wars spouted by religious crap. And in 1198, it became a military order. Um, due to this religiousness, it would also explain why Teutonic Prussia was really heavily religious. Um, yeah. Also, you're gonna see a bunch of dates skipping and just, um, and I hate to say you can just assume, but you can either assume nothing happened or Prussia was causing mayhem during this time, which both go hand in hand. In 1226, Frederick II's Golden Bull of Rimini granted Prussia to the Teutonic Order, meaning granted that land of what Prussia was. Or It's hard to explain because Prussia, as in Prussia, wasn't a thing until 1525. This land of Prussia is like a fake Prussia, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and between the years of 1261 and 1283, the Knights exterminated much of the Prussian population. Now, between 1226 and 1525, the Teutonic Knights and the Teutonic Order was just causing mayhem all throughout Europe. Literally, just wars with everyone. The most notable ones would be the ones between Poland and Lithuania, and that is seen in the anime. At first, Prussia or Teutonic Knight Prussia is just being a bully, and then Lithuania eventually defeats him. And that's just what Prussia did as a Teutonic Knight. He caused mayhem and chaos and mostly everything war-related, which was his job. He was a holy knight and he was supposed to convert the pagans, when she did. Um, but in 1525, the last Grand Master of Prussia became Lutheran and established Prussia as a duchy and encouraged knights to settle down and marry, meaning giving up their crusading ways and settling down. Now, this is when Prussia is claimed to have officially begun because it had a stable population, a ruler, and a government, and all that. And before, it was just mostly farmland without much order, really. Now, there were other orders of the Teutonic Knights. However, the reason the Teutonic Knights are able to be personified, from my guessing, is that because they were huge. It wasn't just one army, it was a bunch of men. Like, a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of soldiers and men, and it had a ruler and all this, and it had capitals and stuff. Like, um, the Teutonic Knights actually had a, quite a few different capitals. Um, I didn't put any of that on there because my slides... <laughs> I knew they were going to be long, so I tried to condense it as much as I could. And then the other orders just basically didn't last. They were kind of aimless. The full scope of the Teutonic themselves did not die in 1525. It continued on in Livonia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which was another staple place of the Teutonic Order until 1562. Different orders moved around, most notable to Austria and going to war with the Turks. However, the order was officially abolished in, I've seen sources say 1805 and 1809, I'm just going to put both on there. And um, the reason I believe that Prussia became Prussia Prussia in 1525 is because that country needed a manifestation and Teutonic Knight was already like a thing kind of like how Holy Roman Empire the body was already there so Germany just kind of in there and in 1525 Prussia just morphed himself into this he grew into the Prussian body um as best I can explain. Um, dual Cal Prussia and early Prussia. Dual Cal Prussia lasted between 1525 and the 
I can't remember exactly, but sometime in the 1700s, um, it just started being Prussia, but Dukal Prussia was, um, it was still Prussia, it was just called Dukal Prussia, and I can't remember exactly why. Also, you're gonna notice a bunch of time skips again, nothing really important happened that really changed the shape of Prussia too much between the time skips and all that, so forgive me. Frederick William I left Prussia with an astounding military and over 80 million thares and reserves. Thares, Thars, I don't know. And this is what made Prussia a really big military power. It had the best military in all of Europe. Frederick II used those resources to make Prussia a superpower, mostly by going to war with Austria and France and all of this stuff. Prussia went to a lot of wars to become the superpower, to show himself, which I can really see in Prussia as this pompous, prideful, show-offy guy. Like, Prussia went to a lot of wars and won a lot of wars until Frederick William II, who sucked and l did not know how to do any type of financial economy stuff because he left Prussia in financial disaster. Frederick William III tried to stay neutral during the P Napoleonic Wars, yet failed and went to war anyway in 1806 and lost in the Battle of Jena. Um, and obviously it was to Napoleon in France. Um, in 1807, the Treaty of Tilsit caused Prussia to lose a lot of land. And I mean a lot of land. I will show a video showing just how much land they lost. Leaving it only with Brandenburg, which it, um, had for a while. Cilicia, which I believe it won in one of its first wars raged by Frederick II. Pomeranian provinces, northern West Prussia, and East Prussia. And these were just the lands they kept and it was tiny. I don't even think some of them were connected. Um, middle and late Prussia. Um, in 1814 to 1815, um, by the way, before that, um, as you know, the Napoleonic Wars, um, a few other wars happened, which Prussia did in the favor of Austria, which is why the Congress of Vienna granted Prussia all this land back. Um, it was a lot of, it was kind of confusing how it explained it, but Prussia, it, it worked. Prussia got its land back due to going against Napoleon, more or less. Um, so, let's continue. 1814 to 1815, Congress of Vienna restored most of Prussia's land along with a few additions. 1815, Prussia struck from the Nemein River all the way east to the Elbe River to the west. Now, between the years of 1815 and 1871, because that's a big jump, Prussia went through many governmental, cultural, and artistic revolutions and changes, but nothing that changed much of the shape of Prussia drastically, so I'm just not going to mention any of that. Obviously, it went through some wars, it went through some government changes, chambers, lower, upper, all this art, the romance revolution. All of that happened, but I don't feel it's worth mentioning. In 1871, Bismarck, Otto von Bismarck, I keep on getting von Bismarck and von Steuben mixed up when... Don't do that. They're two completely different people. In 1871, Bismarck combined the offices of Imperial Chancellor, Germany, and Prussian Minister President, merging Prussian and German history, because what Bismarck wanted was a unified Germany of German states, and his policy was blood and iron, so it was either submit to the combining of Germany or die, which Prussia... I, I don't think it was weak at this time, but it was in the favor to do this, just to be stronger. And this kind of merged Prussia and Germany, and Prussia already spoke German, basically. So it, it was kind of an easy transition, not really. The video will explain it a little bit better. Um, also, because I fear there's copyrighted music in the video, uh, there won't be any sound, but I will be pausing it and making comments along the way. So sorry for no sound. But I'm not getting a copyright strike again. That was terrifying the first time it happened. So this is the reshaping of Prussia between the years 1525 and 1871. This video is about roughly four and a half minutes long, but it goes well beyond the 871 mark, which is where I'm going to stop it. Also, again, sorry for no sound, but I'm pretty sure the song they use is copyrighted, and I don't want a copyright strike or claim on me because I spent way too much time on this video. Um, so without further ado, let's stop it. Uh, let's start it, sorry. The rise and fall of Prussia. Prussia. 
Frederick the Great is the um, is Frederick the Second, um, and as you can see, you're about to see an exponential um, increase of land. And as you can see, the Napoleonic Wars have started by this time and is slowly losing land. Um, this isn't the major lo loss of land, but it will show it in a moment in better um, in a better way. Napoleon arrives. By the way, you're gonna see these things and like it'll be taken away in a few minutes and again, some of the land isn't connected. But um, yes, this is going to show you where the land was and how it was taken away. And this is what Prussia was left with after the Treaty of Tilsit in 1807. And this is all the land it gained back. And again, it's not connected. I don't know how this worked. And it wasn't connected, but whatever. Um, that's a typo. It should say lost to Switzerland, but whatever. Not my job. Bismarck, under Prussian rule, under Prussian rule. So that is the shaping of the Prussian map between eight, between 1525 and 1871. Um, again, as you can see, it goes on for almost three, three more minutes here. Um, it's... Uh, we don't really need that for the purpose of this. I feel like I can explain it rather well without needing that, but I just wanted to give a... This was the best visual I could find, um, and it, um, really, I like, I like the part where it showed how Napoleon arrived and this was the land that was captured and then taken away, um, and it gave um, years and rulers a, a little bit more than what I could do. Uh, if you want to see the full video and want to hear the music, um, I will link it in the description. Uh, I think the last minute or so is just um, some things about Prussia, it's, so it's not just fully th this map they have, um, but I will link this in the description um, if you want to continue watching it because it, it is a pretty interesting video. So the fall of Prussia, defeat of Germany in, eight, in 1918, I don't really like how they use the word defeat. Um, Eh, eh. Yes, Germany was defeated, but it wasn't just Germany that was defeated. World War I was a mess, and the sanctions placed on Germany were slightly unfair, but whatever. Um, and it ended Prussian supremacy, so it kind of made Prussia not as important as Germany. Prussia lost many territories until it was just land under the Weimar Republic. I didn't, in every source I found, land looked exactly like that. So I put it like that. I'm assuming by what they mean land, as in the land still held the title of Prussia, but it wasn't, uh, It it's kind of like where I live, it has a name, but on a full, full map, it would still just say the bigger town that's next to it. Um, in 1933, Hitler abolished Prussian legislature, making it sole purpose for administration administrative duties. Um, this kind of reminds me of how Liechtenstein started. It was originally just um, a small set of land for Austrian nobles that expanded to be the country of Liechtenstein. I feel like that's what Hitler did with Prussia, however, just kind of reverse engineering that. As in, um, it was a country, but now it's just a little piece of land for whatever I want. Um, and that would explain Prussia still being Prussia in the World War II strips. 1945, Germany is divided between the Allies. Um, Northern East Prussia was annexed by the Soviet Union. And we'll get into more of East Germany on the next slide. And in 1947, 
the Allies officially abolished Prussia. Now in the video it's going to say because the Allies blamed Prussia for World War II. I don't really believe that. I believe they abolished it because they knew it wasn't really much and um, it wasn't important. It abolished a bunch of tiny little things and made tiny little things that are nothing anymore. So um, this, what happened in this council kind of just things happened and Prussia was on the chopping block. Um, I don't really believe the the, the thing that um, they did it because they blamed Prussia. You couldn't really blame Prussia because it was just kind of a little land they used. I don't know. Um, East Germany. When dividing Germany after World War II, the Soviet Union and the soon-to-be underlings, I think, I believe they're called satellite states, but I'm not 100% sure, got most of the eastern halves of Germany, and that's simply because they were the eastern half of Europe. It's just a lot easier to get the eastern halves of Germany. And Allies took the western half. So what the Allies wanted to do was to r release Germany into its own thing again and like not, you know, not have a repeat of what happened after World War One. But um, the Soviet Union wanted to keep it and make it communist and that's what happened. And that's the Cold War ensued. So due to the political differences, obviously communism versus democracy, or capitalism more like, Western and Eastern Germany became two different nations. Western Germany wasn't really um, as heavily occupied as Eastern Germany. I don't think Western Germany was occupied that much at all, other than, I can't even think of something, but Eastern Germany had <laughs> a lot of Soviet influence. Um, the Berlin Wall was built in 1961 to keep the halves separated and, you know, to stop Easterners from going to the West. The wall was officially destroyed in 1989 and Germany reunified in 1990. Now, some people may say that, well, East Germany and West Germany were still just one Germany and big no to that. Big, big no. Huge no. Um, they were two different countries with two different flags. Um, I believe they even had two different currencies. Um, even today, they're still pretty different, which is why Prussia still exists. Um, but if you don't believe me, I have some images from the 1980 and 1984 Olympics, which I thought they were the most interesting p political standoff I have ever seen. So in 1980, the Olympics were held in Moscow, and many democratic and capitalist nations boycotted it, including the United States, which I don't even, um, uh, as you can see, there's a bunch of nations italicized with just the, um, Olympic rings and circles as their flag, and that is because they still attended the Olympics, except they didn't go under their flag. They went under the neutral flag of the Olympic Association or Olympic Inter An International Olympic Committee, and that's just um, so they could go, but not go as themselves, if that makes sense. I believe the last Olympics we had in Seoul, um, a few nations did that. I think Russia had to do that because um, they weren't allowed to attend because of doping. And I believe North and South Korea did that as well. I can't quite remember. I don't really like the Olympics. Well, I don't really like watching the Olympics, so I didn't really care. Um, so, yeah. And, um, again, they boycotted it because they didn't want to go into Soviet land. Probably just political crap. And these were, and in 1984, the Olympics were held in Los Angeles. And as you can tell, there are a lot more nations attending. Oh, also, something I forgot to show you on the last slide. As you can see, here is East Germany, and it has, like, a little thing on the flag. I believe it kind of looks like a compass and a bird in it, something like that. And then here you can see there's West Germany with the normal, well, normal German flag, like the German flag we know today. And as you can see, there's a lot more nations attending. But you will also notice the absence of some nations that are here, but are not here. And this is because it was held on American soil, democratic, capitalist soil, and the Soviets and the other nations ruled by Soviets were like, no, we're not attending. Bump you. And these were the nations. 14 countries took part in Soviet-led boycott of the 1984 Summer Olympics, and these were the countries that boycotted. Most, if not all of them, are 
are or were communists at the time of this happening. Um, I know Poland was, North Korea was, Vietnam was, East Germany was, Hungary was, Laos was, um, Bulgaria was, Cuba was, Czechoslovakia was, all of the others I am unsure, but if they took part in the Soviet-led boycott, they had to be, or had to at least agree with the communists part. Three other nations boycotted the Olympics, but they said they boycotted for other reasons and not just part of the Soviet-led one. Um, one of them was Albania, and I believe, um, I can't remember the other two, but I know one of them was Albania. I, I, I know that for a fact. It was Albania. So, these pictures, these, um, images just prove that East and West Germany were two different nations, and Germany wasn't just, like, um, like, with two divorced parents, like, um, joint custody type deal there, um, and it actually shows that Germany went to the 1984 Olympics and East Germany slash Prussia went to the 1980 Olympics, um, and it showed that they were two different countries. Um, now, East and West Germany are still pretty different. I mean, that wall was up for, like, what, 20-something years, and even before then they were pretty heavily separated, so... Obviously, you're going to have differences. Um, some of the, some people in, in East Germany still claim they're Prussian, um, though I assume those are mostly older people, um, not really younger people. Um, and Prush and uh, people still claim Prussian ancestry, like I know Hedefax, I believe, does claim Prussian ancestry. Um, I don't know anyone else that claims Prussian ancestry, but I know people... I. I don't know of people that do, but I know people do. do. Do you get me? Like, I claim I am, I believe I am half German. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's half German there. But I don't know specifically where from Germany, so I can't necessarily say that I am Prussian, per se. But, yeah, that is why Prussia still exists today, and why he isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, it took a lot of research and I'm sorry it came out kind of late, but whatever, it's fine, we'll get through this. Someone asked me if I left the Hitalia fandom and I'm just like, honey, I posted two videos right after I posted four Hitalia videos in a row. No, I'm not leaving the Hitalia fandom anytime soon, these videos are so much fun to make, um, I love doing the list types of videos and these types of videos. Um, ones where I don't really have to do a lot of theorizing, I kind of like, <laughs> simply because I'm bad <gasps> at theorizing. Sorry, I have the hiccups. I ate, like, right before I recorded. Don't do that. You'll get the hiccups. Um, anyways, uh, all of the sources I use will be linked in the description along with the video. Again, I didn't want to play it with the sound and get a copyright strike. That would be terrible. Absolutely terrible. Because I spend an hour on the research. And then as, fun, as much fun as it was. No, I don't want to. I don't want to re remake this. Um, because there's a magic in the first recording. Um, anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more anime and otaku related content. Ciao, chicos.